Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I'm going to present one of my videos from my new channel, Research Flat Moon. Now, this has been released over there, but I wanted to go ahead and put it up on my main channel to get it a little bit more exposure and maybe encourage you to go over and give me a like and a subscribe on my new channel. So, let's go ahead and go on with the presentation. Today we've got part three of our evaluation of Questionable Education's Flat Earth Proofs. Today we're going to be dealing with this, the Bolivian Salt Flats. Now QE's argument is that over thousands of square miles, there's only a meter of relief or less. Let's go ahead and have a look at this and see if this is a valid argument. So cue up the music and let's go. Okay, so let's have a look here at the Bolivian salt flats. We've got a nice lady dancing in a puddle on this salt flat. How nice. Now, according to Quantum Eraser, it says here, according to the heliocentric, sun-worshipping, spinning ball, space monkey religion, every point along a tangent in every direction from your feet drops away from you at eight inches per mile squared. Okay, how nice. Now, these Bolivian salt flats are exhibiting less than one meter of vertical relief over an area of 9,000 square kilometers. Now again, what's wrong with this? Why does he say one meter of vertical relief? Why doesn't he say curvature here? Now the reason that he says vertical relief is that he's trying to subtly manipulate his audience into a false premise. So let's go ahead and have a look at the different ways that we measure elevation and distance from the ground on Earth. Mean sea level is considered the baseline for the surface of the Earth. The distance between mean sea level and say an aircraft is its altitude. Altitude is always determined by atmospheric pressure at the level of the aircraft. Now under 18,000 feet what we do is we find the sea level and we compare that directly to the altitude of the plane. Now, when we look at objects that are on the ground, such as this mountain, they have what's called elevation. The top of the mountain has an elevation, we'll say 10,000 feet. This little plateau has an elevation, we'll say 7,000 feet. And this little spot on the side of the mountain also has an elevation, we'll say 2,500 feet. Now, the height above the ground is the actual height between an object such as an aircraft and the ground directly underneath it. The vertical relief is the difference between two points on the surface of the earth. So for example, the vertical relief of this mountain is from sea level to 10,000 feet. The vertical relief would be 10,000 feet. The vertical relief from this plateau at 7,000 feet to the top of the mountain would be 3,000 feet, and that is this distance right here. Now here's how looking at just vertical relief can get you into trouble. Right here we have the tallest mountain in the world. This is Mount Everest. It's 29,000 feet high. This is Denali or Mount McKinley in Alaska. It's 20,000 feet high, so 9,000 feet of elevation separates Mount Everest from Denali. However, if you look at Mount Everest, you'll see it sits on the Tibetan Plateau. So if you're looking south towards Mount Everest from the Tibetan Plateau, you're starting off at an elevation of 16,000 feet, and the mountain appears only 13,000 feet high. That's its vertical relief from this plateau. If you look at Denali, this area of Alaska surrounding it is less than 2,000 feet high. So that mountain has 18,000 feet of vertical relief. And as a result, that mountain looks bigger than that mountain. However, under Quantum Eraser's argument, Denali would be the tallest mountain in the world. 
So looking at quantum eraser's argument, you could logically conclude that Denali is taller than Mount Everest because you can see more of it. As we know, that's not the case. Here it says vertical drop. Here it says vertical relief. Now, is this a new misunderstanding for him? No, it isn't. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at a video I did a while ago on Google Earth as a flat Earth map. Well, we have a 500 mile distance between the shore of Sicily and Libya. So let's take a look here. So everything's in plain sight. We're gonna take an elevation of point D. And what do we got? We have four feet. So let's wing on over to Sicily. What do we have for an elevation in Sicily? Well, we have four feet. Now remember the definitions that I told you. Level, not rising or falling or higher on one side. Horizontal or flat. So this meets the definition. Okay, so basically what Quantum Eraser is saying that since the shore uh, in Libya is four feet above sea level and the shore in Sicily is four feet above sea level, they are at the same elevation. So therefore it is flat between them. Now, seriously, these elevations are given above mean sea level. So they can't really believe this, can they? Can they? We'll get an elevation profile. So from the shore of Sicily for 500 miles, as you can see, we have a 0, 0. 0.00 vertical drop. In fact, it's 508 miles. From Merriam-Webster, level to make a line or surface horizontal make flat or level now he continues to go on for a few minutes about the various definitions of level now he looked at the same page that i did so you know that he saw this definition of level why is he not including this definition i think the answer will be apparent in a little bit i mean why do i even have to provide citation for this well, QE, the reason that you have to provide citations is so that we can check you because you are known to lie about your citations. This is a good example. You cited the definition in the dictionary, but conveniently left out the part of the definition that said conforming to the curved surface of the earth. I wonder why you did that. Well, let's go have a look at your line here. So here's Sicily and here is Libya. The starting and end points are not exactly the same, but that's a 500 mile line. Now here's the problem that you run into. That's not a straight line. It actually conforms with the curve of the Earth, as you can clearly see. That's what level does when you conform to the curved surface of the Earth. And we can confirm that right here. And that is, that line is clamped to the ground. Let's go ahead and make that an absolutely straight line. Look at that. Now, you can already see a problem here. And that is, that line no longer conforms to the surface of the Earth. And as you can clearly see, it is now a tangent line. This end of the line and that end of the line are at a much higher altitude than the part of the line in the middle. That's what happens when you draw a perfectly straight line on a curved surface. And again, he misstates a modus tollens argument. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 P, then there must be a measurable 781 meters of vertical drop over every 100 kilometers of Earth transversed. Again, that is an incorrect statement. Now, once again, because his argument is incorrect, confirming his misunderstanding of the problem, his conclusion is incorrect. So in conclusion, while QE seems to be able to confuse level and flat, he's also confusing vertical relief with this so-called 
vertical drop along the sphere. Vertical relief is the hills and valleys in relationship to the surface of the Earth, whereas vertical drop is a horizontal line carried down to the surface of the Earth from an observer. Now, one of two things is going on. Either one, quantum eraser simply doesn't understand this well enough to make the distinction between the two, or two, he understands it perfectly well and is counting on the fact that his followers do not understand it well enough to be able to tell the difference. Well, here's the problem. For every hundred people that blindly follow this flat earth narrative that QE and like are putting out, there's one ranty who actually sees the light when it all clicks to him. And make sure you hit the like and subscribe so you can catch the next episode in this series where we see how Quantum Eraser misunderstands the Sea Sparrow missile and line of sight radar. So in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Yeah.